If you haven't read this book, you've probably seen someone carrying it. It's been on the bestseller list in England for 32 weeks, I believe, and uh, it's hit the bestseller list here and stayed on them for the last uh, couple of months or more. Uh, it, it's a delightful book about a, a man who couldn't be more pleasant, more charming, more... You know, of course, that I mean Mr. David Niven. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice to see you again. A number of people fell in love with you the last time you were here, both at home and on my staff. And you've got you've got hearts strewn in front of you. Any, any here today? Disgusting yeah. image, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you too. Yes. Oh, I'll be darned. Since I first saw you. I'm very spoiled. Nice to have you back. The groupie. <laughs> what what brings you back, if I may ask, to to our shores? Well, uh, um, I, really, uh, because a movie that I was going to make with MGM, the the, um, the Melrose story, uh, the Man's Fate, which was yeah. cancelled suddenly overnight by MGM, and um, <laughs> so now <laughs> it's all come together again. We may go to make it in China, which is rather fascinating. After what well, President that. Nixon did there, we uh, may be in the first movie ever made in what China. What is the title? Man's, Man's Fate. Fate, the Melrose, Melrose story. story. Oh. That, that, that was the one that was can Fred Zinnemann was directing. Yes, Fred Zinnemann. Yes. Will he be directing it now? I have hope they so. changed? I hope so. Yeah. Either that, that or I'm off to St. Louis to make a movie there, but one of the two, and I had to make up my mind tonight, and I don't know what the hell to do. <laughs> How do you decide between St. Louis and China? Have you had that choice before? There's <laughs> well, really a difference between yen and dollars, but I don't want to go into that. <laughs> I'm glad they're doing that again. Um, what is your sun sign? My, what? Su my sun sign? Yeah. Birth sign? Yes. Pisces, fish. Yes, will you? I am too. Are you really? Yes. Oh, that's good. Now, what do you it's know very, from asking that? It's very difficult to make decisions. I oh, hopeless. Uh, really. Hopeless. We can make them for you or for the cameraman, but don't try to make them. No. We really have to throw coins or dice. You or two something. both are, 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 no, are doomed. It's doomed. It's really difficult yes. to awful. do. It is, it is agony. I know there are people who um, decide that their sign will tell them, for example, whether they're going to win an award or whether they're going to, uh, whether it's their day or their night or not. You won an Oscar. You've mentioned last time that you won it and stumbled. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We ju we've just been through the Oscar ceremonies and all. Is there, is there a, can you tell us how much real political maneuvering there is that goes on there or not? Well, there is a, there's a lot of fiddling of it because uh, if, a, if a, an actor gets an Oscar, it is supposed to add a million dollars onto the box office take of the movie that he's got the Oscar for playing in, you know. Mm -hmm. So obviously there's a lot of, a lot of uh, publicizing goes on to try and get the award for that person. So all the studios involved are all publicizing and the pressure is absolutely hair-raising, you know. Mm -hmm. And for instance, I, I was lucky enough to get it, but there was an awful thing that happened because the, the, when, the, when the ballots are sent round to all the, whatever it is, 4,000 members of the Academy who vote, they went round on, the Saturday, on a Friday, and on a Saturday morning in the Hollywood Reporter, which is the sort of Bible of Hollywood, you know, mm -hmm. it said um, a quote from a hair-raising article in the Washington, must get this right, I think it was the Washington Post, a man called O'Brien, and it said, O'Neill, Jim O'Neill, and it said, uh, Jim O'Neill wrote, he said, I was talking to somebody who was a member of the Academy who was voting tomorrow, and I said that I thought that uh, Niven should win it for his very sweet, what he said, but he said, that, but the man I was talking to said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't vote for him on a bet. Now, this is a, a, a picture called Separate Tables, and he said, I wouldn't vote for him on a bet because his performance in Separate Tables was an exact copy of Eric Portman's performance on the, who played it on the stage. And he copied his every move, his every inflection, and he, he saw the play 55 times and was finally bodily thrown out of the theater. And this is now reported in the Hollywood Report. And I said, well, that's it, that's the finish, you know, there's no way. And actually, I'd seen the play once four years before. So I did the unforgivable. I sent an angry cable to the press, which is usually fatal, you know. So I mm -hmm. sent a cable saying, this is monstrous, and I've only seen it once. And, Got a cable back from Jim O'Neill saying, I'm horrified at what I've done. This is, this is irresponsible reporting, and I'm, I'm ashamed, and so on. And, and I apologize to you now, and I will apologize to you in print as soon as I can. In the meantime, the least I can do is to tell you who said it. So he did. He told me the name of this man. It was a sort of minor producer in Hollywood. So I called this creature up, and I thanked him for everything. <laughs> you know, I, I said, I want to thank you for all your good work you put in for me for the Oscar. You know, <laughs> 
And he said, well, geez, I voted for you, and you're in there, baby, and, you know, I put the cross down. Oh. down so. I said, well, now I want to read this to you, and I read him the whole thing, you know, and there was a terrible noise, like boiling water at the end of the telephone. And I thought he died. I was sort of mentally <laughs> slapping his wrist, you know. So he rallied, and he said, oh, God, I did it. I did it. I'm terrible. I did it. So I said, well, why? What happened? And he said, well, somebody told it to me, and I thought it was a funny story. And oh, I, dear. I said, well, tell me, just for fun, tell me who. It was, I was doomed anyway, and he told me. So then I traced it back about eight times. And it actually came from one of the other actors, one of the other nominees' publicity departments of their studio. That's and the actor had nothing to do with it, didn't know, of course. Yes, and it does go To so try and well. chop down, chop down the opposition so that the man would win. It's like that win. game, you know, wow. where you, 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 you play telephone into one person's ear and to the other person, mm -hmm. and it's really a terrible garble at the end, and quite vicious. Oh, it's awful. Actually. But you actually ran that down and proved that. Yes, and that, yes. See, and it came to the, the poor actor, the poor actor had nothing to do with it, obviously. Yeah. You know, and you were splendid right. in the movies. Oh, you are. It was. It was I'll be the judge of that. It <laughs> was. You were splendid in the movie. We have a station break. We'll be right back. <laughs>